Today is a monumentous occasion, our first cup final as Union Berlin manager. It's the DFB Pokal final and we are taking on Bayern Munich. Yeah, yeah, Bayern Munich. That does mean that the transfer special and the summer transfer window has to wait until tomorrow's episode, but don't be mistaken, I've got some business done early and Asan Widreogo is back, baby. Yes, we had him on loan for the first half of the season. We had an option to buy him for £6 million. Schalke then recalled him from his loan spell. He has spent the second half of the season playing for them regularly. Schalke, however, bottled the playoffs against Heidenheim, weren't promoted, and as a result, we have swooped in and snapped him up for £9.5 million. Now that is a deal that is £3 million up front and then a big sum, £6.5 million, paid over three years. How are we funding that, you might ask? Well, we've had all the prize money, of course, for the end of the season. But elsewhere, Diogo Liete, the backup left centre-back, has already agreed to leave us. Yes, the first sale of the window, £11 million to Leipzig. When you look at centre-backs in our ranks, we've got some rather good centre-backs. And don't be deceived by Liete's star rating here. He is not that much better than everyone else. We have players like Florian Flick who joined us halfway through the year. And I think when you compare them head-to-head, -head, Flick might even have the edge. But even if he didn't have the edge, £11 million. It was just too much money to turn down at the end of the day. Anyway, all of that to say, we're doing transfer business a little bit earlier than perhaps I planned because we have had a three week break. As you can see here, overall balance of the club looking rather healthy with all that prize money. But today's game is rather significant because if we win this game, we get Europa League football next year. If we don't win it, we're in the Conference League. And I don't really want to be in the Conference League. Today we are going to decide, do we end Season 8 on a high or do we end it slightly sad? We'll find out together. I hope you guys are as excited today as I am for this video, but not only for this video, but for the long-awaited return of me streaming on Twitch, because today... F1 Manager 23 comes out, and as a result, we're streaming it over on Twitch. There's a link down below. It's twitch.tv slash work the space. I will be streaming the game for the foreseeable future alongside the Football Manager content. And as well as that, I'm looking to get the races from the streams edited into videos that go up on this YouTube channel. So keep your eyes peeled for those videos coming your way soon. I appreciate that if you're watching this video in a year's time, this whole segment here has absolutely no relevance to you. I know there's people who rewatch the series. I know there's people who arrive late and binge watch the old series. So if that's you out there, thank you. I, I hope the future's nice. Anyway, we have got full focus on this Bayern Munich game today. There's been that three week break between the end of the season and this one. In hindsight, maybe I should have organized some friendlies. I've never managed in Germany um, before. Yeah, I say that. I have, but not for many, many years. And as a result, I kind of didn't really think to organize friendlies. So if you manage in Germany on the regular, should I have been organizing friendlies? I feel like I probably should have been. Now, interesting thing to note here, Alfonso Davies is away on international duty with Canada. Brendan Aronson is away on international duty the USA. So both teams missing rather important players. I'd argue that Alfonso Davies for them is probably the better player. Whether or not he's more important, I suppose, is up for debate because Aronson has actually been a useful player this year. It does also mean that he doesn't get to play before his loan from Leeds United ends. I have an option to buy him for £35 million. I won't be buying him for that uh, because at the moment our transfer budget for next year is £5 million. That said, hasn't actually been confirmed yet because we don't know which European competition we're playing in. So at the end of the match today, the budgets for next season will be set and that will lay the groundwork for what we can actually do next episode. Now, first things first, eagle-eyed viewers, you may have noticed we're at the Olympus Stadion Berlin for this final. So... We're going to go do an away day. I've never been to the Olympia Stadion Berlin. I have no idea what to expect. It's an old ground. We'll go check it out together. So for today's away day, we are going from Berlin to Berlin. Um, yeah, it's not the most long distance away day, is it? Now, I might be mistaken here, but some viewers did tell me that in real life, um, Union Berlin are actually going to be, I think, playing at this stadium for their European games next season. In Football Manager, we didn't play at this stadium this season in our home games, but here it is in all its glory. It has Olympia in the name, so I'm going to make the very bold assumption, knowing that in the 30s, when this stadium was built, there was an Olympics held in Germany, and suggest that maybe this is loosely tied to the Olympics. 
I mean, if it's not, that would be mental. First things first, can confirm car parking. If there's one thing that the Germans seem to do well, it's car parking. And for the more green-minded amongst you, there is also a train station here. Whether or not it's actually a train station or just a place for freight, I'm not sure. Does it look like a train station? I can't tell. I could be wrong. I, th I think it might have been closed down. There there's No one seems to be using it, which... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's from March 2022. It's not in the pandemic either. It's not a train station. Or maybe it's closed. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. As for the stadium itself, it's got a running track. We'll get... You know what? I don't want to go in the stadium yet. Let's enjoy what's outside of it, where there's more football pitches and running tracks and swimming pools and car parking. And this is my happy place. Everything around this is lovely. There's a bell tower and observation deck. Please tell me someone's gone up to the top of it. Can we get an aerial view of things? Um, the answer is kind of. There's the stadium. I mean, why buy a ticket for the game? You could just stand up here and watch any matches going on. Don't mind me. Uh, just inspecting the car park. It's a, it's a very long car park. You could park many cars here. Oh, and, and there's the stadium the other way. I suppose we should really be focusing on the stadium now, shouldn't we? I already know that I'm going to be annoyed by the inside because it's got a running track. But what I will say is I do appreciate the fact they've not modernised the stadium, which might sound like a bit counterintuitive because I do like modern football stadiums, but there's something quite impressive and nice about a structure that's almost 100 years old that is still kind of maintained, has stood the test of time, and just still looks impressive, really. As for the actual stadium itself, I mean, it is. It, it's a pretty stadium. The roof looks wicked. I assume that this bit where it's all open, this is like the Olympic torch went up here. It, I mean, it's unique. I complain about stadiums being symmetrical all the time. Can't complain about that with this one. If you sat here, you are getting wet. I'm not sure how I feel about the running track. I normally hate running tracks, but for some reason a blue running track just seems slightly less offensive. I have to say, as a spectator, pack your binoculars though. You are going to struggle to see what's going on on the pitch, aren't you? A question I've got, and I'm sure someone can answer this, this can't be the original roof. This must be a new roof. Was, it, was there much of a discussion about renovating the whole stadium? I respect the fact that I assume they just replaced the roof and everything else has just remained intact. You can see here... Obviously, Berlin Olympics, somewhat controversial historically for certain reasons, but the fact that this is so old and it sits here and it's maintained and it is still used actively, I think should be commended. It looks pretty incredible. And as such, I think it's going to be a fitting venue to see us lift our first piece of silverware as Union Berlin manager. Uh, didn't mention it earlier, there are diving boards next to the football pitch. That is probably bonus away day points right there. Thoughts on this stadium? Only down point, hate the running track. It had a viewing deck, it's got diving boards, it's got a beautiful car park, loads of facilities on the outside. Mix of old and new. It's not symmetrical. I just wish it didn't have a running track, but I have to give it a score. I mean, it would be awkward to have an Olympic stadium without a running track, wouldn't it, really? I am going to give the Olympia Stadion Berlin an away day score of 8 out of 10. I, I, I like the architecture. Love the roof. Good vibes. I only wish it was a bit greener. There was lots of dead grass around the outside. I, I, they do have water in Berlin, right? Water your grass. Okay, game day. Bayern Munich, we've not beaten them yet. We will have to beat them at some point in this series, you'd imagine, to ultimately dislodge them at the top of German football. Why not believe today could be the day? Here's the team. As I already mentioned, obviously Aronson's on international duty and Gangkam is injured. You might be wondering, Christopher Trimmel, club captain, 37 years old. He's leaving us on a free at the end of the year. Is he on the bench for the last game? You know, he could have a sentimental appearance in a cup final. Absolutely not. What kind of person do you take me for? The only other place where things are looking slightly makeshift today are at centre-back. Jekyll is injured. He is our go-to right centre-back option. As a result of that, Flick is going to be playing at centre-back, who, to his credit, is actually a very, very competent centre-back. In fact, you could argue he's better than Jekyll, but Flick this year has been more regularly deployed in the centre-mid area. He's had a pretty good season, by all accounts, since he joined us. For 1.7 million, I think we got a bargain. He loves big matches. I need him to turn up big at centre-back today. As for Bayern Munich, I mean, it's Bayern Munich. Uh, here's their team. Mane up top, Musiala, Muller. The three M's, M and M and M. Da, da, na, na, na. Wait, that's BMBM, not M&M's. Different brands. 
Okay, if you can't tell, nerves are getting to me a little bit, but we roll. Here we are, cup final. We lost 2-1 and 3-1 respectively against Bayern in the league. We were never completely outclassed by them. They're playing this very, very defensively firm system with three centre-backs and the four kind of players in front of the back three. I've noticed that Kadira, who they signed off me at the start of the season on a free, has only played 19 games for them. They're playing him against me in this final. They are playing mind games and I do not appreciate it. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what? We're not down after 20 minutes, which I think is already an improvement on past meetings. Could we get first blow, though? Heinz. Wide to Rousselon. He gets inside and gives it to Scott. Datro Fafana. Back to Rousselon. Back with Heinz here. Look at this. We're having some of the ball. We're playing it around nicely. It looks pretty. Alex Scott goes to the ambitious pass. Doesn't find its intended target. Now, we might have some defending to do here. Muller. Bringing the ball forward, wearing the captain's armband, back to Kadira, back to Lima, the Austrian, down the line to Muller. Couple of options in the middle, Lima now with it, he's going to float it in, flick, misses his header, DaCosta misses a tackle, it comes to Mane, and after a mad scramble, it's not in the back of the net, everything is fine. On the one hand, half an hour played, and we've not had a shot on target, on the other... It's still nil-nil, and the time is continuing to trickle away in the top left corner. This is actually perfectly fine. For all the ball they've had, they've done very little, and at half-time, it's nil-nil. It's not pretty, it's not nice, but, I mean, we're still in it, which I think is good. I am going to tell the players I'm far from pleased and get them motivated. We are going to have to do something going forward at some point in this game, but the longer we can keep it at nil-nil, the more the smash and grab feels possible. Draxler whips in, Jordan heads over, Draxler has got an injury. Forgot to mention this earlier, actually. Julian Draxler has got a contract for another year because I forgot that I gave him a clause where if he played 10 league games, he got a year extension. He's here for another year. He's 30 years old with five natural fitness and is injury prone. The fact he's injured here probably should be sounding some alarm bells, probably should be taking him off. And you know what? Gruder who uh, he's not exactly hit the ground running since he joined us, but he's done fine. I think you're the man to come on the, as a 20-year-old and make a difference for us. I'm not sure why I think that. I, f I feel like, I don't know, if I throw him in the deep end enough, eventually he'll start swimming. Maybe today's the day he swims. I mean, we've still not had a shot on target, but it's now the 69th minute. Nice. And, well, Gruder's on the ball here. What can you do, my son? Inside, Jordan. He dinks it. Fafana's there. Uses his pace. Hits it. Did the keeper save that or did that hit the post? I think Jan Sommer might have tipped that wide. Either way, it was a golden opportunity. It's the best chance we've had. With it, I think we're going to stop things here and make some changes. I'm going to take off Jordan and I think bring in Undav. I am going to have to just keep Fafana on. He is our best player by a country mile. We've got to show some faith. In the midfield, we're not looking great in this game. Laduni's looking a little worse for wear. I'm going to bring in Habera for him. Fresh legs brought on, two subs left in our back pocket. There's 15 minutes left. I almost don't really want to change anything because at the moment everything's kind of going okay, he says, as Bayern just head it over. Okay, here's the thing. There's 10 minutes left. We have spent this game with a low block, just forcing them inside to our better defensive centre mids, kind of setting up strong. There's a temptation to continue to play like this, but I don't think we can actually win playing this way. We could maybe play for a penalty shootout. That feels a tad ambitious. So with that in mind, I think now is the time, having sat deep a little bit, to really press, to really push the issue a little bit, go a little bit more direct, get it into space quicker, and just try and make something happen. You know, we've hung in this game for a while, but with 10 minutes left, I feel like now is the time to go for the smash and grab. How much added time is there going to be? Four minutes here. We could be going to extra time. We are going to extra time. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I mean, when you look at the XG story, it's a miracle we're still in it, but it's not been awful. We'll tell the players again that I'm far from pleased. How many subs do we have left? We've got two subs left and one stoppage to do them in. I think I make changes now. Danny DaCosta is exhausted at right back and at left back, things are looking pretty bad with Rousselon. So I think with our final two changes, we, uh, we bring in fresh wing backs and we... Maybe just go a little bit more conservative in the midfield. We are, of course, playing that higher pressing football. But Alex Scott, you know what? You you can chill a little bit. Just sit a little bit deeper. You can ping balls like a quarterback from deep. 30 minutes left here. We've got taken it to extra time against Bayern Munich, which on in some weird way, it feels like a win. But I now actually want to win the game. 
Whether or not that's possible remains to be seen, but nothing has happened for the first 12 minutes of added time here. Finally, a highlight. We have the ball. Gruder, where are you going? He's out on the right-hand side. There's plenty of players behind Templeman. Habera. Inside Scott, pull the trigger. Why not have a go? It hits the crossbar. Undav can't get there. Narbury's on the pitch. He's going to get it away. We are knocking on the door. I mean, they're not creating anything of significant quality. There's 10 minutes left here. I mean, no matter what happens now, I'm pretty proud of this performance. I say that and then a highlight begins. Have I just is this is this really how it's going to happen? Kimmich inside Narbury, Rono. He's not been called into action much. He's made a big stop there. Two minutes left of this game. It's going to a penalty shootout. We have barely any good penalty takers. You know what, Marcus Hoffman, my assistant, you decide the order, mate. I trust you. Fafana's positive. Templeman's positive. Forsby's confident. That fills me with dread. He's going to miss a penalty, isn't he? I'm so proud of your efforts. Keep it going. That's what I'm telling the boys here ahead of this penalty shootout. Very important we do this. Behind the goal camera is being activated. I'm zooming in. The height's already at its lowest. <sighs> I'm feeling nervous. All right, Rono, I've kind of talked up replacing you this year. Be the hero, my friend. Do what needs to be done. So bits of bottles the first penalty. Fafana, I want to keep him on. There's no chance we get him for another season from Chelsea, sadly. Could he end on a high? He's missed as well. I can't believe it. Penalty taken for each team. Both missed. Guerrero now steps up. He is going to score. Habera brought on off the bench. I'm going to claim for his penalty taking. Might not have really factored into my decision. He has scored. It wasn't a convincing penalty, but I'm not going to complain. Now we look at Thomas Muller. Thomas Muller's good, isn't he? He's going to step up. Rono, what can you do, my son? Captain on captain. Rono saves it. Oh, my word. Gruder, he's 18 years old. We're throwing it. Is he going to learn to swim today? I thought it had been saved. It hasn't been saved. He scored it. And now Chupo Moting. Of course, Chupo Moting is going to take a penalty in this final. What's he going to do? He's going to score. He's going to score. 2-2 two, two in the shootout. We've got this penalty in hand. Templeman brought in in January. Can he score here? Please do it, Templeman. Please do it. He sends the keeper the wrong way. Bayern have to score their penalty. If we score our penalty afterwards, it doesn't matter what they do. Narbury stepping up to take it. Look how far he's got to run. Why does this highlight take so long? I can't speak. I can't believe that. Please miss it. Please miss it. I can't handle the stress. He scored it. Who's taking our last penalty? Please don't be Forsby. Please, who, it's Undav. It's Dennis Undav. We've loaned him for the year from Brighton. He's not been very good. I don't think he's going to be coming back. But he could leave us with a beautiful memory here. What can you do? Can he score? He steps up. Score this. We win. And we are going to win the DFB Pokal in our first season. Bayern Munich. Get pooed on. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know how we've won this. We, we didn't deserve it. But sometimes you've got to play crap football to win football. And that's what we've done. Mourinho would be proud. It finishes nil-nil. But... We get a bit of silverware to enjoy. Hoist it aloft, lads. Rono is going to be the man to lift it. We will be playing in the Europa League next year, not the Conference League. And that means despite Werder Bremen beating us last episode, we get their last laugh. They can have the Conference League instead. Absolutely biblical scenes. Very, very happy with what we've just done there. Now I want to know, what's the transfer budget? for the next season. What money are we going to be given? Draxler's injured. It's not a bad injury. That's fine. We get given £5 million for that. Where's our budget? Where? Where's the transfer? I need to know how much money we have to spend. Confirmation, we do qualify for the Europa League. Also, I agreed a bonus with Brighton. We're paying Brighton £800,000 because we won the... I never really thought about that clause actually mattering when I signed that loan. That was an error. Rono, by the way, in goal, got mad of the match. When your goalkeeper gets mad of the match in a cup final, kind of implies how the game went. I'm now just mashing continue, hoping that I'm going to get told about the transfer budget set for the season. Now everything's been done. And indeed, I can see this item here at the top. Aronson's losing with the USA against Mexico. That really doesn't matter for us. Squad planning for next season. That's for next episode. Club vision. Board are delighted. How much money are we going to get to spend? The answer is a wage budget of £675,000 a week, a transfer budget 
of £21 million. Pounds. That's rather tasty. This is a rather unexpected sight. Silverware on the end of season review. Also, the thumbnail for this video I've already made. It's me holding the trophy with Tuchel behind. That was made before the final was played. Uh, people are going to claim that the thumbnail was a spoiler for the video. No, I just wanted to photoshop myself holding it, thinking it'd be funny when I lost. But now we've won, it's just a bit awkward. It really is depressing that Ngankam has won signing of the season, despite the fact that he has barely played in the second half of this season. In fact, he's not played in the second half of this season because of that injury that he sustained. He's still out for between two and five months. And for a player who leans on his physicals rather heavily, for a player who's had a few injury issues over his time, so the fact that he's got this knee ligament injury doesn't exactly bode well for the long-term future of his career at the club. Elsewhere, Fofana was absolutely immense for us this year, of course, in on loan. Sadly, have looked into loaning him back. Don't think that's going to be an option for us. Alex Scott, the wildcard signing we made this year, board rating him an A at 20 years old. He has only got better and better and better. Slightly concerned he's got a minimum release clause of £62 million. Probably going to want to try and negotiate that out of his contract in the summer. When you look at the players that we sold on the outs, I actually think we made some pretty good deals here. Becker, of course, left for 10.5 million to go to Roma. He got three goals in nine games in Syria. Uh, safe to say, didn't really live up to his price tag. Knock, we sold for 7.5 million pounds to Dortmund. We finished above Dortmund in the league. His ratings, his performances... Pretty horrific for a centre-back. The only other big sale of note we really made this year was Juranovic. He left us in January for 7.25 million. I think it probably was now, with the benefit of hindsight, a smart decision to sell him when we did. You'd be forgiven for thinking I was disappointed and annoyed with our Bundesliga finish after last episode. But actually, to get European football this year was kind of... A dream scenario and conference league football technically would have been that of course with the benefit of today's episode we now know it's europa league football but to finish top seven to get european football that was the name of the game we've managed that the champions league i mean let's be honest it was absolutely horrific there is no point in sugarcoating it it was super super disappointing but it is pretty incredible to win the dfb pokal and to do it the nature in which we've done it feels nice i mean when you look at the teams that we actually took on we weren't really properly tested until Bayern in the final. We got pretty fortunate with the draw. Club reputation hasn't moved up a star rating, but I'm going to work on the assumption it has at least improved a little bit based on this year. Obviously, there is no previous season to compare any of these numbers to, but thing to note, really, in Germany, compared to when we've been managing in the Premier League on this YouTube channel, um, TV money is not quite as big. Prize money, a pretty big deal here. Obviously, Champions League contributing towards this, but almost £80 million pounds earned through that. Here is our best 11. As noted at the top, we did rotate the team a lot through this season. We did not have a deep squad. On top of that, we had a lot of injuries to contend with. And with European football, there was a constant need to shuffle. But naturally, two players who definitely deserve mentions. Dantro Fafana, I mean, he was absolutely mad. 7.2 rating, 19 goals to his name. Also, Alex Scott, the only other player to break the 7.0 rating mark. Kind of depressing. Uh, I didn't get any manager awards. I did get third place in the Bundesliga Manager of the Year for what it's worth. I don't really think it's worth anything. Fafana picked up Fans Player of the Year and also Young Player of the Year. Slightly concerned about all of that, knowing he's not coming back next year. I have looked to make a loan signing for him. Chelsea don't they they don't want to loan him and I can't really afford him either I'm not going to get too focused on potential transfers and squad building because that is something we are going to be covering in tomorrow's transfer special but just to look at things real quick here supporter culture and expectations for next year they want a mid-table finish and for us to finish ahead of Hertha Berlin as for the board's vision for the future you can see here they want us to be focusing on youth. That is very much the direction we've been taking the team in with signings we've made this year. There's definitely a few players on the older side I want to get rid of. And on top of that, there's a few young players here with a lot of potential that I want to pave ways into the first team for. Another thing to consider, Shremel's about to leave us on a free. We have got some very influential players here, many of whom are not necessarily mainstays of the first team. So the hierarchy, it might get a little bit messy in the immediate future. Team meeting, tell the players mid-table. This is that meeting where you just kind of tell the players that you want to do the stuff that they want to hear. I mean, you could be honest with the players, but then they just react badly. Squad are on their end of season break, but with our transfer budget set, with it now being June already because of how long we had to wait for the cup final, I think things are suitably set up 
for tomorrow's episode, which, I mean, if you've never seen a Work the Space Transfer special before, get popcorn in for tomorrow. They are longer videos, they are deep dives, but given the fact it's going up on a Friday, which was definitely calculated, you've got the whole weekend to watch it. Today's game was absolutely bonkers. I did not expect us to beat Bayern Munich. I mean, I don't think anyone did. Um, it was mm, fluky, shall we say. Well, look, we've got away with one. But sometimes you need that in Football Manager, and what a way to beat them as well on penalties. You, Thing of beauty. I am still pissed off, though, that we've just paid Brighton £800,000 for Undav contributing in that final, because to be frank, he's not contributed at any other point this season. Hopefully this summer we can make some shrewder transfers and loans, and I will actually read the clauses I'm offering players. You'll have to tune in next time to find out, do I actually succeed in that? Like I mentioned at the start of the video, we are back streaming on Twitch on the semi-regular. It is going to be just F1 manager streams, but over here on YouTube, the FM content remains unchanged. Keep your eyes peeled for some F1 manager stream videos coming up on here as well. Um, I would love you guys to check them out, especially if you weren't around for last year's F1 manager. It was very, very fun. Until next time, have a lovely rest of your day. We will be back in 24 hours for more Building Berlin action. A blockbuster summer awaits. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.